The new version of Affinity has some very powerful text features. Today we'll look at one of those features, the Frame Text tool. Now in past versions of Affinity, many of the best frame text options were only available in Affinity Publisher. But now all those features are available in the entire Affinity suite for free. If you're new to Affinity and you have no idea what I'm talking about, don't worry about it too much. All you need to know is that all the features I'll show you work everywhere and it's all free. So first, what is the Frame Text tool? Well, the Frame Text tool specializes in large amounts of text. This is in contrast to the Artistic Text tool, which is nice for text that is just a few words like titles. Let's take a quick look at the difference. I'm here in Affinity and I'm in the Vector Studio, but it will work in any of the studios you choose. Down here, you'll probably see a T for the Artistic Text tool. If I click on it, you can see there's another tool in there. This is the Frame Text tool. Let me start just by creating some artistic text so you can see the difference. I'll click the Artistic Text tool, I'll click and drag, and I'll type in a phrase. I'll resize it, and let's put it there. Now let's create frame text. So I'll go down here, and I'll select frame text. Now I'll click and drag over here, and then I'll start typing. I'll say in the year 1800, dot, dot, dot. Now you can kind of see the difference here. The frame text tool is more adapted for paragraphs of writing. Now in general, you probably don't want to write directly in Affinity. It's not really designed for that. I recommend writing in a program like Google Docs or Microsoft Word, and then pasting your text into the frame text here in Affinity. I'll copy this text from Wikipedia to give us something to work with and to see how the frame text works. I'm on a page for castles. Let's grab a couple paragraphs. I'll right click, copy. Let's go back to Affinity and I'll paste it in the frame text. Right away when I have the frame text selected, you'll notice some controls here. First, notice what happens when I click and drag the corners. It'll reflow my text. Sometimes if I make it too small, the text will actually flow outside of the frame. The red eye here controls whether that text is hidden or shown. So if I click on it, I can show the text that goes outside of it. And no matter how I change it, the text will still be there. And I can toggle the red eye again if I want to hide it. So it's up to you which one you like. Up top, I have a control to rotate the whole frame. So I can rotate it like so. Now on the bottom right, there's a special control. If I click and drag this outer dot here, that will scale the text proportionally. So you can see it's not reflowing the text, it's actually rescaling it as I change the size. And that's different from the dot that's slightly in. If I click and drag this, this will reflow. In terms of formatting the text, we have many familiar options at the top of the screen. We can highlight text, and we can make it bold. We can highlight other text. If I click this A here, that'll change the color. We can underline. We can also highlight. So I'll select some text over here. And this marker here is for highlighting. So I'll click this. And we can change it like that. You can also change the background color and border color of your text frame. With your text frame selected, click this T here, text frame. And I can change some of these styles. So I'll change the fill. I can make it blue. We'll click the stroke here. I can change the color of that. If I click on this part here, I can change the thickness of the stroke. I can make it dashed if I want. So that's how you can change the background color and border, along with some other options here. But let's get rid of that. I'll click on this white circle with the red stroke to get rid of it. Let's click on the fill here. And again, let's click on this button to remove it. We can also create multiple columns of our frame text. Over here, we have the column counter. It's one by default. But if I click the up arrow, now I have two columns, and I can add three. And of course, you can still click on the edges and change the size of it, so we can make it wider. Maybe we want to rescale the size proportionally, so I'll click this part here. Let's do that. Drag it down. And here we have multiple columns for our text. And speaking of dynamically reflowing, let's look at how we can make our text flow from one text frame to another. So let me create two new frame texts. I'll click on this one, just drag it here. We'll put in our text again. Now let's create another frame text over here. Now if I select this first frame text, notice how it has this arrow here. I'll click on that, and I'll click on the second frame text, and the text is reflowing between them. And if I resize one, it affects how the other appears. So let's make this wider. If I make this narrower, it flows into the other one. If I make it taller, it flows. So this is how we can connect frame texts together. So this is a really powerful way of having Affinity do the work for you when you're splitting up text between areas of your document. And if you want to get rid of that second frame, just select it, press delete, and then everything will go back to your original frame again. Now with frame text, we aren't just limited to simple rectangles either. 
We can create our own arbitrary shapes and put text in them. I'll use the pen tool to create my shape. I'll select a pen tool here and let's just draw something. I'll outline this castle. Maybe I want to put text above it and I'll close it. So that's what my shape looks like. Now from the menu bar, I can choose layer, convert, and then two text frame. And now what happens is you see I have a cursor here and there's a cursor blinking in there. And if I press command V to paste my text, well, the text all went in there. It's a lot of text, let's delete some of it. And you can see the text is following the shape of my object here. Let me actually give a border to it just so you can see it easily. I'll click this text frame here. Let's give it a stroke. I'll make it green just so you can see the boundaries of it there. That can easily be hidden later. But if I use the node tool here, this arrow, as I reshape my text, notice how it's flowing within it. So you can fit your text and shapes however you like. And yes, all the features I showed you already still work like they do before. So I can make two shapes here. Let's do one. I'll convert this to frame text. Layer, convert, text frame. Let's make another over here. Again, I'll say layer, convert, text frame. Let's paste it in here. And with this selected, I can go, click the arrow here and connect it to the other one. So now any changes I make in this will be reflected in the other one. Not the best shapes, but you get the idea. You can even adjust columns too, if you like. So I can add columns and you can get quite creative. Now there is another way we can get text to dynamically wrap around an object. And that is to use the text flow settings. So we do this on the object that we want the text to flow around. So let's say I have this image here and I want the text to flow around the image as I move it throughout the text. Right now it doesn't do that. But to make it do that, I'll select text, text wrap, and then show text wrap settings. And we have a bunch of different options here that determines what the text will do around that option. Let's choose the square one here. So I'll click that, I'll press close. And now notice how when I move the image, the text actually dynamically flows around it. So wherever I drop it, the text is wrapping around. I actually like to have that text flow button displayed on the toolbar. You can do that by right clicking up here and saying customize toolbar. And you can choose the one that says wrapping here. So I'll click this, drag it onto my toolbar, and I'll say done. Now that this object's selected, I can click on the setting here. I'll click on this button and I can further customize it. Maybe we want to change the border there. I'll link these. I can press up. Let's add, say, 100 pixels of space. And you can see the effect that's having there. And there are more options here for flowing that you can play with. One thing we can do is wrap around other text. For example, using a quote or something. So I'll create another text frame. Click and drag it here. I'll paste some text. So I have a little quote here about castles. Notice how right now it just overlaps my text. What I can do is go to my text flow options. Let's say square again. I'll say close. And now when I put it somewhere, they'll have the text wrap around it. So here we have our image example and our text example. Now, when you look at text like this, there may be lines showing where the grids are. If you don't want to see that, you can go to view, make sure preview mode is enabled. If I uncheck that, I'll see the borders of my frame text. If you want to get rid of that, you can go to view preview mode. And that's how you can get a clean look at your document. And here we have a finished result. I have some artistic text tool here. You can see how the text flows around that. I have a transparent PNG down here. Again, the text is flowing around it. And same thing with our text and image there. If you want to see more tutorials on Affinity, be sure to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.